oh, I don't have a hoe. Oh, what? It like insta breaks it all. That's how I've got so much. With your insta hoe? Today, we're going to be building an extremely fast and compact bamboo farm, complete with a bamboo processing area, and then use it all to cover up this farm to build a beautiful Japanese pagoda. And as a bonus, we're going to modify this custom bamboo farm, fit a sugarcane farm in here as well, because, well, we are desperately low on rockets. Bruh. All right, so I think we're going to put this farm right over here next to our storage area. So that way, when we're hanging out in our storage room, this farm's going to constantly be running. So let's start clearing an area out. Hey, yo, this guy headshot me. Boom, headshot! Dude, I'm trying to film an intro. Duck! Alrighty, I think this is all the materials we're gonna need. So I spent a ton of time looking at different bamboo farms, and none really fit what I was looking for. I need a square farm for, well, the pagoda, so it fits in there nicely, and I needed it to be fast. So I modified an original design by Raiseworks, and I came up with this. So let's get building, and then I'll tell you how it works. I, uh, probably didn't need to use powered rail for all this in hindsight. Oh, well. So this farm makes use of flying machines, and this is my first time building flying machines. I know, I know. Anyways, then it simply breaks all the bamboo once it reaches the height of this observer. And then once it's all broken, the flying machine returns and triggers all of these minecarts to run and collect all the items to drop into these hoppers and droppers, which is then sent to this central dropper, which I have turned off for now until we build the item collection system. I also forgot to mention that these farms are originally meant to be open air. So that's why I added all these lights to ensure the bamboo would continue to grow. Okay, now for the sugarcane farm. This is pretty simple as it uses the exact same design, but since sugarcane requires water, I just added some waterlogged slabs throughout to grow the sugarcane. And then since sugarcane only grows three blocks tall, I added a trigger sugarcane by this observer. So I don't have to fart around with adjusting the flying machines and the observers. Perfect. That is both the farms done. Now let's jump into creative and figure out how to cover these farms up. All right, we're in my creative world. As you can see, this is where I was designing the actual farms and messing around with different designs and what actually ended up in this farm world. But anyways, let's get building the decoration to cover up these farms. So the first thing I like to do is bring in a copy of the survivor world farms with the terrain around them so I can build the farms with the surrounding terrain in mind and really incorporate the two together. Perfect, this looks great. Okay, now we have a little miniature copy of our survival world in our creative world. So I knew I wanted to build a pagoda, and since I've built a few, I knew we needed a solid base and a tall square shape. Now I took some creative liberties with the base and I wanted to have gardens surrounding this pagoda to spruce it up. And so I simply created some circular terrace gardens at random levels around the base, which I think turned out great. Now don't worry about the block palette right now. We'll fix that at the end, as you've probably seen in the thumbnail. And then I basically just went to town trying different roof shapes and angles until I came up with this undecorated, ugly block palette mess, but the shape is nice, at least I think. Okay, now let's save the talk about the block choices for when we're building this thing in survival. But you'll get a little teaser while we collect some of the materials. So of course this uses a ton of bamboo because we always like to represent the farms inside with the materials in the build. Now we just need a few other things like cherry wood, tough, Calm down, tough guy, huh? nether bricks, oh shit. <clears throat> Actually wait, I think we may have some in the bartering farm. Okay, perfect. This is the most useful farm that I've ever built. While we were there, we grabbed some blackstone and I think we have most of everything. So let's get building this thing. Okay, so starting at the base, I used a mix of stone bricks, mossy stone bricks, tough, and some deep slate for contrast, as this gives it a more of a natural old stone look to make it look more like gardens and they have been there for a while. Oh yeah, the mossy stone brick. I completely forgot that we had to get a ton of moss for this. Is it faster just to use your fist or to use a shovel? Oh. Oh, I don't have a hoe. Oh, what? It like insta breaks it all. That's how I've got so much. With your insta hoe? 
Okay, now getting to the actual pagoda itself. We actually really love this color palette. I knew for sure we wanted to use bamboo, but given how light of a color it is, I opted to use it for detail blocks. And then I really wanted to make use of cherry wood because the texture actually looks great as a structural block. From there, I opted to use a textured white wall, which is a mix of white concrete, polished diorite, smooth quartz, and birch, which I think looks awesome. This also doesn't stray too far away from authentic Japanese looks. Then when it came to the trim and the roofs, I knew I needed something that was darker than cherry wood, but also had some pink and red tones. So I went with some polished black stone bricks as the roof, and then I used nether bricks for the trim to tie the cherry wood and the black stone together. Sid and I were talking about this build as we were building it, and we think this is our favorite color palette yet. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. So let's finish this thing up, and then we can get to the fun stuff. All right, that is the pagoda done. This might be my favorite one yet. Now let's quickly slap together this item collection system. This one is pretty simple since we do not need any sorting and I simply just make water channels from the farms above to feed into a big set of chests on the main floor. That way we can quickly come in and grab the outputs from these farms. Well, let's be honest, I've seen dirt huts with nicer interiors than this. Boom, that's so much better. Okay, let's head over to check out the final build of the bamboo farm. Coming from our storage room, we walk through this beautiful little tranquil cherry blossom pathway, which I think looks really cool. And then we're here, pretty much 10 seconds away. <laughs> As you can see, Cindy's sprinting up the stairs there. Do you want to tell us a bit about what you did on the exterior here in the gardens? I'm going to zoom out and F4 and take a look as you talk through it. Sure. All of these platforms that you made were perfect for adding these little gardens. I included some ambient lighting, big dripstone leaves, sugar cane, all different kinds of flowers. I also created these like bonsai looking trees. I don't know if they look like bonsai. You guys let us know, but I kind of think they look like bonsai trees. What was the vibe you were going for? Just like natural elements, but also some color too. It's a jungle biome over here, so the grass is super vibrant and green. I wanted to add just a ton of colorful flowers. Mostly, like a lot of the a lot of the flowers are pink, pink vibes mm -hmm. to go with the cherry wood. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I included all different kinds of flowers too. Yeah, it looks really good. You want to talk through the aquariums that you put in as well? Oh yeah, sure. Went out, got a bunch of tropical fish, a bunch of coral blocks and coral stems, <laughs> whatever they're called filled up both of the aquariums <laughs> yeah looks really good i like it a lot some color and some life to the build itself of course lily pads you want to jump on the inside yeah sure all right our bamboo processing facility so i thought this was a cool idea this is campfires put out but they kind of look like pallets so i have different stacks of pallets over here with all the different kinds of bamboo wood they basically look like they're getting ready to go be shipped out to customers or whatever basically <laughs> just being manu <laughs> manufactured if you will and this is this is the bamboo storage itself over here as you can see we have quite a bit of bamboo already almost all told double chests full and it hasn't been running that long to be honest um, and then we got some boats on some pallets over here and then sydney did a really good job with the roof trusses and the interior lighting here which i think looks really cool nice pink green bright vibrant interior yeah, quite a few uh, trapdoors there, but 
I like the end result. It looks always, nice. Yeah. Those trapdoors are always fun to place. <laughs> yeah. And then we have the sugarcane side over here. You want to tell us a bit about what you did here? Yeah. So I don't know. I was thinking about sugarcane and sugar and I was like, oh, we can add a little kitchen. You know, we're going to make some cookies, some cake. I've got some, I've got pumpkin pie over there. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to use it for, but Yum. fill the corner anyways. And a nice sitting area to eat and enjoy it. Yeah. All right, everyone. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you like this build and want to add it to your world, check out our channel memberships and be sure to check out our last video where we built Ice Crown Citadel.